What is up you guys and welcome back to my channel. So for those who are new here, my name is Nicole. I'm now a third year teacher and we are again rocking and rolling through this school year. We have already are on our fourth week. We've been in school for four weeks. It doesn't even feel like that. It feels like a lot longer for being completely honest. But today I'm gonna show y'all how I set up my math small group instruction. We have a time built into our schedule which is called win time. And it's pretty much this time where I get to pull, pull kids to my table. I get to have them do math centers because I only teach math and science. So I'm gonna show y'all what I do exactly for those and I'm gonna show you how I set that up. So if that's something you wanna see, then just keep watching. Okay, the very first thing that I do is of course, I find an area in my classroom that is accessible to all of my students. And I mean high rise because I teach second graders. I have some really like tiny kiddos and I have some really tall kiddos too, but I have to make it accessible to everybody. So when we do our win time, the students can either grab a bucket, which is where they can take it around the room and do like a very hands-on activity. They do, these, which are at your desk stations, these are normally like coloring pages with addition and subtraction problems, pretty much building up their basic facts. We also have this other bucket, which I don't have enough buckets, so we're just using this for now. So they come and grab the supplies that they need, or they're on technology. Now, let me show you a glimpse of what goes inside. Okay, so now let's talk about our individual buckets. So before I had them as um, like reading books or I had them as student numbers, but I'm not using that anymore. So they take the bucket, each student will be assigned a bucket color. I don't change bucket colors. They, if they are green, they're green each week because I don't wanna change the bucket colors because then that just causes chaos and just an organization. So the student knows every single week when they're on the station, they grab this color. It makes life so much easier. Now, for this week, we kind of struggled with our basic facts. So I am incorporating that into our small group time. So they just have simple subtraction problems to answer. Once when they answer them, then they're able to color it. So they have this paper that they'll put their name on and turn it into our tray. Then they get counters, 120 chart, and then a pencil. I make sure that they have all of their supplies in there right after we're done small group time because I teach two classes and it's gonna be mayhem if I can't keep track of all the supplies. So the students know what is in the bucket beside the paper stays in the bucket. It does not go home with them. So they know that and then once when they're done, they know to turn in the paper into our blue basket or pink basket depending on what class it is and they put their bucket back onto the shelf. It's a routine. I have been trying to hound that into them that they put this into it. It does take a little bit and you do need to be patient with your students, but eventually they'll start picking it up and they can do it without help. Okay, now let's talk about our little bucket. So I have three of them. So the student knows to grab the bucket. With these, they are able to move around the room just because we have our other buckets and we have our technology already at the desks and it'll be complete chaos and no room if we added this to it. So the students know that they can automatically go around the room to a different section and do it there. When they do do this, they know that the game, everything that's in the bucket stays in the bucket aside from the paper. I'm very big on documenting my students, especially this holds them accountable because if they know if they have to turn this in to me, I'm actually gonna look at it and I'm gonna see if they're doing what they need to be doing or if they're playing around. So they get this, we're um, ordering. So this week we're comparing and ordering numbers. So we're practicing ordering numbers. Now I saw on Pinterest a really cute idea. You get blocks, put tape on them, and then write a number. So my students grab five blocks and they need to put that from least to greatest or greatest to least. And they start building it. And they're like, oh, that's 21, that's 32. So that's gonna be greater than, and they can start building those skills. If you put hands on material, it makes it so much more easier for the kiddos. And then of course they have their answer and document. I do have a 120 chart in here just because some of my kids just need that extra visual and then a pencil because they lose their pencils like no tomorrow and it helps when they're like, oh, I, just, I need to write this down. So this is the buckets. I'm gonna show you how I set up my 
small group table, I have my teacher table, and then I'm gonna show you how the heck I show this to the kids and they understand it. So now, let's talk about what happens at my teacher table. So normally the first... So normally the first five minutes of the beginning of our win time, which is just that small group time, my students are asking me a thousand questions and I'm trying to clarify them. So what I do is with my small group table, they know to bring a pencil to the table. It's an automatic thing that they know. They work on basic facts while I'm trying to answer everybody else's questions. And then by the time when I'm done answering everybody else's questions, I come back and they're already done with this. So they put this, put their name on this and we move on to the skill. So it varies between the student. I have students who are very low and I work with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis based off of what they need help in. And then I have some other kiddos who are excelling, they get the information and we do a little game. So it just depends on what the student needs. My advice though, if you do have a small group table, get these spots. I will link it down below so you can have them, but get these spots because it helps out so much. If you're working with an expo marker, they go into the spot and it doesn't ruin the table. It just goes on the spot, stays on the spot, and it's golden. I love these spots with my whole entire heart. They came on the table already. The previous teacher in this classroom did not take them off, so I got very lucky, but I will link them down below so y'all can definitely see it. So, teacher table is when I can get that one-on-one -on -one time. I can extend the learning with my higher kids and I can work with my lower kids who need that one-on-one -on -one time and that more hands-on experience. Okay, so this is how I display my um, places. And I, of course, will zoom in for y'all because I know this isn't the best angle. But, so I work with slides. Slides have been my best friend because I just click, 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 click. So the first thing I automatically do is I set a timer. We have 25 minutes to do a small group time. My timer, when I get onto the slide, automatically starts. I just set that setting in there and it automatically starts. This one does have an alarm because I'm not checking my phone, I'm not checking my time because I'm trying to work with my small group while listening to all the other students in my classroom. So I'm doing multi things, I'm not focusing on the time. So my timer has been a saving grace for me, okay? now. Our groups, they spell out math. So when my kids get to M, it's meet with the teacher. It explains what it needs to do, and then it tells the kids who need to come to me. PSA, I don't mention my actual kid's name on this document. These are either my family, my husband, or my dogs. That's who is on this list. It's not my actual students, because y'all know I'm very, very protective of them. So <laughs> let me zoom in closer and show y'all. The student will see their name. I have a brief description of what it need, what each letter stands for. So my group spell out math with an exclamation point. My M stands for meet the teacher. My kiddos know if they are in this section, they grab a pencil and they go to my desk. They know that because we practice that routine over and over again. The A stands for assignment at your desk. And I don't know if y'all can see it or not, but I'll zoom in. So there's the name and there's a, there's a colored bucket. I even put, so it says green, but I even put it into green. That way they know, just automatically, green bucket, go get it. So then you have a dark blue bucket and purple. Visuals are so key, especially since I am teaching bilingual students. These visuals are so important. And eventually, not right now, but eventually, I'll even put a picture of what their assignment actually is. We're gonna play around with it, but I might put a picture like, hey, you're doing the coloring page. Here's what your coloring page looks like. Then of course, technology. The kids know it is a black, yellow, or red computer that they need to grab. The H is hands-on activity, okay? So they know it's either the clear bucket, light blue bucket, or pink bucket. Again, it does not change. So next, so this would be Monday schedule, right? They do one station per day. So one station, they're doing 25 minutes. They're not doing every single station in one day. That is too much for my kids. So they do one station, so let's say that Andrew, Bentley, and Sammy, which is my two dogs and my brother, so those are not my actual kids. So let's say Andrew is on the clear bucket today. He stays on the clear bucket every single week. He's not changing. So then he will work on that activity for 25 minutes. Tomorrow, 
he'll move over to the exclamation point. So how I do it is, so let's say that I'm Miss Todd. Let's say Miss Todd's on math on Monday. Tuesday, I'll go to assignment at your desk. Wednesday, I will go to technology. Thursday, I will go to hands-on. And then the next Friday exclamation point is at your desk work, the little fun activity. So I know I talked about a lot about what everything looks like and how I set them up. You just gotta find a system that works best for you. It took me three years to figure out how the system works and it's working perfectly for my second graders. You just gotta play around with different like ways and techniques to find something that fits your kids. This works for me, but it might not work for you. And you just gotta play around with it but don't change too much on the kids. They get overwhelmed and they start getting flustered and they start like losing track of it. So if you enforce one thing, keep it that way. And I promise you, your small groups will run so stinking smoothly. So I know that was a lot of information, but I wanted to share that with y'all because took, again, it took me three years to figure out how I wanted to do small groups and it has run so smoothly so far. Like the kids know what to do. They have that routine set in stone and I'm so excited for the rest of the school year because they're only going to go up from here. But if y'all like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can join our little family. But I love y'all so much and I can't wait till our next adventure. Bye guys.